In 2007, a long-range transportation plan and budget was approved for the houston Galveston region, but that budget no longer applies to the recently drafted short-range plan because of decreasing tax revenues from gas and other items in TxDOT's latest revenue forecast. That means the houston Galveston Area Council has to, may have to cut our region's long-range plan by $40 billion. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, Harris County Judge Ed Emmett is a former member of the Texas House Transportation Committee and former commissioner at the International Commerce Commission. Alan Clark is the director of transportation planning with the Houston Galveston Area Council. And Fort Bend County Commissioner James Patterson chairs the region's transportation planning committee. So good morning and thank you all for being here. That was a mouthful at the beginning, so I'm going <laughs> to help have you guys help me explain what that means and I know between the two of you because you chair the area's transportation committee and you're the vice chair you kind of um, I don't know if control or manage <laughs> about 500 million dollars in transportation funds is that accurate a lot of money a, a, a lot of money but when you say you, you have to realize this is a regional uh, absolutely so there's uh, 34 members uh, very diverse from uh, Chambers County to Galveston County to Harris County, the city of Houston, smaller cities that are all involved and all have their thoughts about what should happen with the money. Okay, so let's talk about what, what is happening because when we talk about money that may not be available and although it's down the road when you hear it in 2035, let's talk about how that affects what's going to happen in this area a lot sooner than that. Well, quite simply, uh, we have to prioritize projects. And the reason for putting together the plan is to let the public have input into that also. So that we know we're not going to have enough money to build all the transportation projects that are needed. Uh, but one thing we've learned recently as the federal government, for example, releases stimulus plans, we need to know which projects should come in which order. And that, that's really the idea of, of putting together a plan like this. It's got a short range component a mid-range component, and then the long-range sort of pie in the sky if we could do everything we ever wanted to do component. So it is, um, I guess, not uncommon that there would be changes, especially in light of the changes in the economy because it's based on projections. Is that accurate? Well, we've never had a situation where we had to make such dramatic funding reductions in our plan, and, and, um, and some of it's very short term. If we look back to the last 10 years and look ahead to the next 10 years, the Texas Department of Transportation is going to have um, only one-third of the amount of spending in our area that they had uh, during the previous decade. And for projects that build new roads or add lanes to existing ones, the money available is going to be about 10 percent of what we spent in the time between 2000 and 2010. So it is a big shortfall that's here today. Uh, part of it is due to the economy. Part of it is due to the fact that people are driving higher mileage vehicles, and that'll be particularly true in the future. Uh, part of it is due to the fact that, um, quite frankly, we've been uh, borrowing money to do some of the improvements um, statewide uh, this past decade. And as a consequence, our local governments, our counties and our cities, our transit agencies are having to pick up a larger part of the share. Now, let me ask you something. Over the it's projected that over the next 10 years, we're going to see our region grow by at least a million people. So that's more people that will be having to get around. And so we're going to have maybe, now we're talking about having less money available to find a way to move these people. Is that? The, the advantage that we have in our region is as those uh, million people come, we have wonderful developers that as they develop these subdivisions and if they're uh, part of a major thoroughfare, they know that they're going to dedicate the right of way and build that major thoroughfare. Those are not the problem areas that people, you know, but when they get on the interstates and they get on the uh, 59s and the I-10s, that's where the problems start to exist. So in the case of the counties uh, in the last five years, the regional counties have uh, passed over $500 million in bond, local bond indebtedness. Uh, Harris County spends $120 million a year that's equivalent to bond indebtedness uh, for making sure that our area stays up. It's, uh, well, let me ask you something, because when I was reading through some of the material, it looked like 
if we talked about some of the projects on 290 coming up, that might be affected Absolutely. from this from not having the monies available or from this, this adjusted plan, if you will? Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, 290 is <clears throat> probably the one we, we talk about more than any other. We've got the potential Hempstead toll road. We've got commuter rail possibility out there. And, but 290 is a U.S. highway, and ultimately it needs to be funded by the federal government and the Texas legislature. And when we go back and look, uh, we've had a myth for years in this state. We've talked about free roads and toll roads. There's no such thing as a free road. And the legislature is going to have to address the funding of highways. Otherwise, almost everything's going to have to be a toll road or it won't get built. We'll take a short break. That's a good place to start. We're going to come back and talk about other areas that might be affected in the short range and what you can do to um, weigh in on how this all happens. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're talking about transportation, and that's important to all of us as we try to navigate the roads and get around. And the fact that there could be a really big but, uh, cut to the budget for the long-range plan, and what that means really more immediately. Because although we're talking about a plan for 2035, that's 25 years away, I think it's important for people to understand what that means in 2011 and 2012. And so we talked about 290, and I asked in the break about 610, and you say what? Well, there are problems along 610 that, that we need to, um, to improve, uh, particularly interchanges like 288 and Loop 610. In some cases, those, um, in the inability of the state to have the resources to be a partner prevents our cities and counties from uh, doing their part to make that better. We have a toll, potential toll project in the 288 corridor, which I believe is um, in part going to be held up if the state doesn't have the resources to do things like work on the interchange aspects of that project. So are we looking to see, I mean, you said something, Judge, before the break, that there are no such thing as free roads. Right. You know, and so are we going to see in the future, you mentioned 288 <coughs> potentially, uh, a future toll road area, where the new roads being built will be tolls? A lot of them will be. Uh, and nobody likes to pay tolls. I mean, I, I don't find anybody who says, gee, yeah, I really love either. toll roads. <laughs> but uh, imagine if we had not had the Harris County Toll Road Authority, uh, if we didn't have Beltway 8, if we didn't have Hardy, if we didn't have West Park, just what a mess we would be in. So toll roads uh, are going to be a, an important part of our future. But I don't think we should give up on funding the traditional highways either, such as 290. 290 needs to be completed. We need to put a toll road next to it on the Hempstead Corridor. Those, those projects need to work in tandem. One of the things that it sounds like is that we always like to give our viewers something to do. And so they need to pay attention, I guess, talk with their state legislators. We're going to put a link to our website so that you can actually go to HGAC and see what these different plans are and, and, and to talk about the budget and how you can be involved but to really pay attention and know what conversations to have with their legislators and, and how to weigh in. Is that, is that accurate? Absolutely. We, we want people to tell us, um, you know, what, what they think the priorities ought to be for the money that we have available. How can we be saving more money? Uh, our local governments and the state are looking at ways to do more with less and, and try to get the, not only get the, the best benefit from what we are doing. Those are all ideas we would like to hear about. And, and from the local standpoint, the most toll roads that you find in Harris County and Fort Bend County specifically have a free component beside it so that you know the philosophy I believe should be that you will still have the free road to drive on as the judge said no such thing as free road right. but let the toll road I had a man tell me I don't drive on the Beltway 8 that toll road I drive on that feeder <laughs> and I said guess what that feeder is built by the people who drive on that toll road for you so you know, as long as we keep that where people have the right to drive otherwise. So there are options for people. And, and I guess the key is to really understand. Um, a $40 billion, I don't know if shortfall is the right thing to say, but cut to the budget is substantial. Oh, it, it's huge. There's no question about it. Uh, but uh, we live in a world where the gasoline tax, number one, hadn't been increased in a long, long time, and it's a flat rate. Uh, as Commissioner Patterson said, cars are getting better mileage. So, so that's going down. Uh, the legislature, it's not an easy task, but they are going to have to address the long-term funding for transportation. And that's without even talking about how we're going to fund commuter rail and other projects that need to be done also. 
So transportation will continue to be a challenge, but it's something I think we also have to pay attention to because what often happens is we say, there'll be notices that say, hey, let us hear from you, and nothing happens, and then when it's time for the, the final thing to be signed, people are a little upset. So we say now, let you hear from the people now. Well, and, and I've got to say how important it is. Transportation, we think in terms of commuters and people, but if the Port of Houston is going to live up to its potential for us to be the gateway of North America, we have to have ways of getting goods into and out of that port. Same thing, freight has to move somewhere too. All right, we're gonna have to end it there. We'll keep up and we'll make sure we link our site to what you're doing at HGAC. So just to kind of summarize from today, you got to check out what's happening. There could be $40 billion cut to the transportation budget, and it could affect all of us as we move around the area. So it's a good time to find out what's happening and a way in. And earlier we talked about migraines. Make sure you don't accept the diagnosis if it is not working for you. We'll have all that information on our website. I'd like to thank all of my guests for joining me this morning and all of you for tuning in. If you'd like to check out some of the previous shows, or get information on today's show, log on to Click2 Houston. And if there's something you'd like for me to check out, let me hear from you. You can reach me at kdavis at click2houston.com. That's kdavis at click2houston.com. You can also check out my Facebook page or follow me on Twitter. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week. Be sure to join us next Sunday when we're talking about politics. The Sunday morning, Sunday morning news is next.